We're going to break down every winner and loser from the 2023 trade deadline, so make sure you stick around to learn about the new NBA. These next few you're likely going to be aware of, but two days after Kyrie Irving was traded, which was covered in this video I made a few days ago, Kevin Durant became the third former Brooklyn Domino to fall as KD was moved in a blockbuster to Phoenix in exchange for Mikhail Bridges, Cam Johnson, Jay Crowder, and four unprotected first round picks and a pick swap. We'll get to the less than ideal Brooklyn standpoint, but Crowder was then dealt from Brooklyn to Milwaukee for a staggering five second round picks. We covered the D'Angelo Russell Laker blockbuster in yesterday's upload, where we also broke down LeBron setting the scoring record. Go watch that after this. More Laker talk today as well, as Palinka remained busy. The most hectic day maybe in basketball history would take place in the last few hours leading up to Thursday's deadline at 3 o'clock Eastern. I'll admit a few things I was officially wrong about. Firstly, that being John Wall's impact on the Clippers, as the man could unfortunately never get back to full form. I also predicted last summer that former warrior Juan Toscano Anderson would be a game changer on the wing for the Lakers, and that Pat Bev and Russ could potentially vibe off one another, dead wrong D-Flow L's on those instances, but with that out of the way, Woj would shockingly take down Riz God Shams in terms of total trades reported, as from the aforementioned Clippers to the first seeded Nuggets, who picked up Thomas Bryant, who was kicked off the Lake Show for nearly ruining an NBA record, and generally from bottom feeders ranging to top contenders, everyone was getting in on the trade action. Golden State would do their best to match the Mavericks and Suns making big plays for superstars in Irving and Durant by getting back a key lockdown defender on the perimeter from their championship run in Gary Payton II. Again, biggest winners and losers from Thursday are coming up. Stay tuned to get fully caught up, including to find out why second round picks were the theme of the day. Right quick, just 17% of my channel's audience is subscribed, so if even a quarter of you were, we could probably hit 100k. Genuinely from the bottom of my heart, in the truest sense I can express, can't thank each and every one of you enough for the support. Please leave a like and hit thumbs up as well. Again, thank you kindly. Not only was Jay Crowder dealt to Milwaukee in exchange for five second round picks, but the Golden State Warriors received five second rounders in a three-team deal with Atlanta and Detroit involving James Wiseman going to the Warriors and Sadiq Bey joining Trey Young, DeJounte Murray, and the Atlanta Hawks on the wing. After the Dubs got those five second rounders, the reigning champs would use them in a trade reported 30 minutes later to bring back Gary Payton II. In terms of moving 2020's number two overall pick, Wiseman, shout out one of my basketball inspirations, Dwayne Casey of the Pistons, for giving James Wiseman a change of scenery and going through with this deal. If Wiseman's watching this video, Go listen to this man in Detroit. He knows exactly what he's doing in terms of building up a culture. The dubs getting back GP2, though, is obviously the biggest storyline here. In the 2022 playoffs, where the dubs obviously would end up winning the championship, Gary was second in steals per game, fourth in blocks per game, and seventh in minutes per game on outstanding efficiency. Is this the deal that saves Golden State's dynasty? We'll see what the script ultimately says. Reason the Warriors won big at the trade deadline overall, though, is not only because their defense is looking much better, but cap space-wise, they really did well here. With Thursday's moves, Golden State is going to save roughly $7 million in luxury tax this year on today's trades, and $30 million in 2023-24, according to Woj. Typical W from Bob Myers and company, making up for letting go of Mac McClung for Ty Jerome. You love to see it. Moving on though, and my raps were shockingly buyers on this fine afternoon, as entering the deadline, despite all the critiques I've given Toronto's coaching staff, as well as their personnel and front office, I actually felt the right move for Toronto was to stand pat entering the deadline. I was hoping they didn't settle for a few second rounders and a prospect for Ananobi, which would have been a nightmare. I'm happy to have a player who really helped build up the Raptors' culture defensively throughout the 2010s with his rim protection, as well as high IQ, swift roll man finishing, but most importantly, his locker room vibes in Jakob Pertl. A++ deal for Masai Ujiri, even with us Raptor fans in a collective frenzy, the combination of yak and skills is back Raps Nation, get hyped. Meanwhile, the Lakers were far from done loading up their roster following the trade for D'Angelo Russell, 
as they confusingly dealt Thomas Bryant to the Nuggets in exchange for Devon Reed and three second round picks. They would later use those picks to acquire a stretch center in Mo Bamba in a trade involving Patrick Beverly going to Orlando where he'd be bought out. Bryant was a fan favorite, but the tank engine now gets to enter an amazing situation in the mile high for the number one seeded Nuggets. In this exchange of assets between Denver and LA, they were both winners. Reason I thought Palinka overall at the deadline ended up doing well though, in addition to getting an efficient center like you had in Bryant with Bamba, Devon Reed was a player for the deeply talented Denver Nuggets who wasn't getting the proper amount of playing time. Devon's seven foot wingspan and lateral quickness makes him a really solid defensive piece. So Reed plus Hachimura and a player I broke down yesterday in Jared Vanderbilt have significantly upgraded LA's perimeter defense. But don't fully trust me when I say that because I did say JTA would be impactful. The Lakers have now doubled the amount of 35 plus percent three point shooters on their team with the pickups of Russell, Bamba, and Beasley. On a different note, I just want to say I'm sorry to the Nets fans watching this video. Hang in there as you've experienced maybe the fastest downfall in NBA history. This team was right on the verge of the number one seed not too long ago. The talk of the NBA universe. And you blink your eyes and it's all over. I will say that Joe granting Kyrie and Durant a trade request to the franchise they wanted to go to does give the Nets some decent karma. But if you're a Nets fan, there's literally nothing positive you can take away from this gloomy deadline. Kings County is probably really down right now. The Nets are evidently the biggest loser of this deadline, but we'll see if guys like Cam Johnson and other youngins on the Nets can build something up again and prove their old superstars wrong. That's what the super team era is all about. We'll see what happens, but speaking of KD, the super team merchant is about to form a lethal big four. According to ESPN stats and info, this is going to be the first time we ever see a four-time scoring champion and a four-time assist champ playing together. That would be Chris Paul and Kevin Durant. But watching Devin Booker and KD destroy everyone with their one-on-one -on -one scoring is going to be amazing. It's just about how well both those two can play without the rock in their hands. That'll be the determining factor to whether or not these two high usage, albeit highly efficient scores, can mesh in terms of their play styles. Kevin and Devin is going to be a solid duo though. Phoenix is debatably the biggest winner of the 23 trade deadline considering they were somehow able to hang on to Booker, Ayton, and Paul. They did have to give up two solid 3 and D wings in Bridges and Johnson, plus potentially five first round picks. But with a franchise staple in Devin Booker, whose loyalty has been Kobe Bryant-esque to this Suns roster, it's not like those first rounders matter too much when Book's going to be fueling this team to playoff appearances throughout the entire 20s decade. Phoenix also just picked up Reggie Jackson on the buyout market, that's a topic for another day. While Brooklyn was a loser for this deadline, what makes it even worse for their fan base is that their rivals in the Boston Celtics were winners. Prayers to my guy Jalen Brown who suffered a fractured face and we're hoping swiftly recovers. Boston's really banged up right now, but acquiring a player who essentially provides what Gallinari would have if he didn't tear his ACL in the wily journeyman stretch big, who's going to be great for the Celtics locker room as well as floor spacing and versatility, Mike Muscala is going to fit in really well. Boston sent the deadline selling OKC Thunder Justin Jackson and two future second round picks in this deal. John Wall, who again, I was dead, dead wrong about, is depressingly headed back to Houston in a deal where the Clippers, who also received Mason Plumlee to increase their center depth, are in this Wall deal getting Eric Gordon and fittingly three second round picks. Theme of the day, second rounders, what can I say? This was a three team deal though, where Danny Green of the Grizz is also going to the tanking Rockets and a sniper, Luke Kennard, who wasn't a great fit personality wise for the Clippers, is heading to Memphis. I feel for a player who I watched growing up and I thought could have an impact for LA in the preseason in Wall. However, his effective field goal percentage is only 45.7%, which wouldn't even come close to ranking Wall in the top 100 among NBA players in that category. It just wasn't feasible for a Clipper squad that has championship aspirations with two wings in their prime, Kawhi and PG, to hang on to a player who's taken 10 field goals per night on not even mid-efficiency. 
Some minor deals include the Hawks trading a solid free agent pickup of theirs from 2022's offseason in Justin Holiday, along with journeyman center Frank Kaminsky to Houston for three-point specialist Garrison Matthews. Denver was able to get three potential future picks in exchange for high-volume shot-creating sophomore Busy Bones Highland, whom they traded to the LA Clippers. Decent pickup for LAC, but which deal out of all these should I have talked about more? Best answer down below in the comments receives the shout out next time and the top 5 commenters with the most shout outs by March 21st receive free merch of their choosing so you're going to want to leave your take on my question. Three shout outs from my last three uploads are on your screen, read those solid takes from the community speaks winners at your disposal. You're the best for supporting my channel, thanks for watching.